futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day, all. I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Tuesday, the 2nd of October, 2018. We're really about 3.35 p.m. Central Daylight Time, so the settlement prices aren't in yet, but you're gone to sleep. I just got off the trading floor and it's dead already. Not a lot going on there. Metal's going to finish off the day around this zone. The events of the day were interesting. Amazon went up and uh, said that they're going to raise the minimum wage so that they can hire the staffs they need for the holiday season and the like to $16 an hour. That's a little bit inflationary, I would think. And if you're watching what's going on in Italy, there's a real showdown about to happen between the European Union and Italy over its budget and the spending it wants to do. It's very reminiscent of Greece. That got under gold today and kicked gold higher. The euro, well off the lows of the day at uh, 116.16, got to 116.49 last night. But the break happened, of course, as we keep hearing about the new Italian governments, a lot of problems. Uh, they, they're going, they're committed to spending, and that's in the face of uh, their, their debt ratio to GDP exploding, if you will. Take a look at what's going on and the energy's flat. They, they're not even able to get much of a break. And really, since uh, the Fed raised I interest rates last week, what's going on? We're getting a basic rally again in the bonds and notes. I've been pointing out that phenomena recently. If we take a look at the weekly area chart of closes on the S&P, we're off the high close of 2934 by all of five points big deal. When you come to a daily bar chart, we have what's called distribution going on. We have sideways action in the market right now that is void of a trend at the same time. The swing line study, and this is a chart without swing lines. When I put it on, you've got a lower and low and a higher high. It matches apexes in a very a specific way, looking to see if a day is a higher high day, a lower and low day, an inside trading day, so on and so forth. So as I'm looking at them, by the way, outside day up and down, you've got a lower and low, higher high, sideways action, supports back at the 18-day average of closes. I often call that red line the line in the sand because so often it becomes the zone if a market's over it. In this market, it's pulled back to it to figure out where it can get its footing under it, and it's been acting well from that level. Doesn't mean it'll always work that way, but that's how it's working now. The market's got resistance at the upper Bollinger Bands. As you keep hitting them, within a short period of time, the market seems to roll back, as you can see each time. I see no difference right now. So the market made a run for it, just missed it yesterday. If we take a look here, yesterday was 29.4460, and we got to 29.42. So it missed it by four ticks, pulling back a little bit, but that's all it is so far as a pullback. Unless you take out 29.0750, if the market can hold a break here and start up, it could even end up with higher highs, higher lows again. In terms of momentum, momentum is still gradually pointing upward. You can see the slope of it. But any reading over 70, I call overbought. So I'm going to say that what we've got now is a market that in the bias of the momentum, it's overbought. The bias in terms of being over the 18-day average gives the market an upside bias, and it's stuck in the Bollinger Band still between the upper band and the 18-day average of closes. Notice how that upper Bollinger Band is again stopping the rally in the NASDAQ. It didn't quite do that here, but here you had a narrower area you were coming from than this area. And I'm not saying that that is bearish, bullish. Right now, as a, as a chart analyst, I see a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. However, the warning sign is out that this market is very overbought. In the Dow Jones, this went up for the new highs, but that's the 30 industrials. And one of the things that's been going on is there's caution out there. 
And if you read the newspapers and the financial papers, you're hearing about the rotation where a lot of investors or market analysts are moving money to what they call the safer stocks, those able to withstand a bit of a pullback in the market better than, say, if we were to talk the small caps. And you see that when you look at the Russell. This has been in a downtrend. You don't see that on any of the others. And that, again, is that rotation. And the rotation is which companies can handle higher interest rates better, which camp companies can handle inflation better. And the market is saying it is not those that make up as a group the Russell 2000. Trend down, bias down, oversold. When we come to the VIX, right against that 18-day average of closes, the market has a swing line pattern of higher lows and higher highs, but because it's under the 18-day average, the bias stays down. On rallies, I still look for resistance between 1265 and 1314, the uh, upper 100-day average of closes. In the bond market, I'm looking for price and the 18-day average to come together. Why? Well, you lost the embedded reading back here. Often that leads to that occurring. However, the rally has no oomph to it. And what do I mean by that? Often when you lose this embedded reading, if you lose it, the market quickly makes its run at that 18-day average. I'm using the word often. I wish I could tell you it's all the time. It isn't. This pullback says that this rally is short covering or something like that, but I've got my doubts that it's got a lot of life to it, to the upside, because of how it's setting itself up right now. I'm going to say the same thing of the 10-year. The five-year notes already hit the 18-day average of closes. Now, when you come to the ETF TLT, you get a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. So there's no trend. You hit the downside objectives all the way back here, hit it again, and you really haven't gone anywhere since then. You had a bear market uh, bounce, I'll call it, because you're under the 18-day average. Oversold, sort of sitting here. In the dollar index, you got up to the first challenge of the upper Bollinger Band. Now, one of the things I teach is that if a market goes first time on the down or upside, I look for that number to be where the market's going to see professionals stepping back from the market. That's what I think is going on. So that's what I think. Yes, you were up 20 points, but the market backed away uh, from the upper Bollinger Band. It did get to 95.39. And the same thing happened flip-flop in the euro currency. On that poor Italian news, the market got down for the first time in all this time frame. Take a look. You have to go back into the uh, end of August period to get back to the lower Bollinger Band, which it's done. So we know one of the reasons for it. We know interest rates. We know, uh, we know that the U.S. is going to be coming at Europe for the trade deal. And, you know, the president's going to have that Teddy Roosevelt carry the big stick and the whole thing going on again. But in any case, resistance back up here, oversold market in a downtrend that hit a downside target. In the British pound, 129.78 is the lower Bollinger Band. You got within six points of it today, didn't hit it, but it's still an open target. Lower highs, lower lows, but because you're oversold, you're probably seeing some people step out of the market and say, okay, they're close enough. In the Japanese yen, you've continued to just rock down. For the first time, we're bouncing in several days away from that Bollinger Band. You might be able to get even more of a rally. But keep your eye on the slow stochastic. Until it's lost, rallies should find willing sellers. When and if it's lost, then I look for price in the 18-day average to make an attempt to get to each other. Bitcoin fell back to its 18-day average. Again, I know I'm a broken record with this, but that's where I'm looking for the support. Notice how the Bollinger Bands have now flattened up on you, and momentum has gotten itself out of being overbought. None of the readings are now over 70. So the bulls have control unless the market sinks back under 63.15. If they can drive it up, maybe a goal is the upper Bollinger again at 67.40. In the energy market, it's about Iran. We keep hearing it. Excuse me. And, it, you know, we're, we're only today, what, October 2nd, November 4th is when the oil gets shut down. People are talking $100 a barrel. I don't know. I know that the spread continues to act in the favor of the Brent over the WTI. If you come to the Brent, you see that the market's got one, two, three days in a row now up and over the upper Bollinger Band. It has the embedded reading, but 
you're very overbought. And the odds of staying up over that band tomorrow, the way that I teach this, is 2%. If 